are so grateful for this wonderful marine base in North Carolina that does so much to protect our freedoms, protect our country, but also contributes to the economy significantly in North Carolina. I'm here with our Secretary of Military and Veterans Affairs, Greer Martin, uh, along with Colonel Rizzo, and we spent time today with a number of these active duty military men and women discussing issues which are of interest to them. Uh, the schools, uh, their situation with their housing, uh, what they might do after they leave the military, things that we can do to try to help them in that kind of transition, and things that we can do to make sure that uh, North Carolina is a welcoming place uh, for our, our military. I also recall being here in 2018 after Hurricane Florence and standing amidst the devastation that had occurred uh, to, to this great uh, marine base. And at that time, I saw the devastation and knew that we had to make significant investments. And uh, I stood in front of uh, these cameras and talked about the desperate need for real investments. We're now seeing it pay off. Uh, I just took a bus tour around the base to see the significant investments that have been made, uh, how they've been able to find positive things out of the negative of Hurricane Florence, what they've been able to do to upgrade, retrofit, become more resilient, become more efficient using technology. Uh, it's pretty phenomenal. And so I'm, I'm grateful to get this opportunity to see it firsthand, to see how we've been able to, to make a real difference here and strengthen this camp that's already uh, one, of the, one of the best in the world and uh, helping to train one of the best fighting units in the world. Uh, Secretary Martin, would you want to say a word or two? Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Governor. Wow, it's great to be back to Camp Lejeune. It's the first time in many years that I've been here. The level of investment, the quality of construction that Governor Cooper and I have seen today is amazing. Uh, it, it tells me that the Marine Corps knows uh, that Camp Lejeune is a great place to send Marines and their families, and our job is to make sure that North Carolina continues to be a place where Marines and their families want to live, both when they're serving the Marine Corps and when they retire or ETS, that they stay in North Carolina. If you served your country in the Marine Corps, you're exactly the kind of person that we want to, to make a lifelong North Carolinian. And so we're committed to hearing what it takes to ensure that North Carolina is the place where you want to stay, retire, raise a family, and everything. And we've heard a lot uh, from Marines today about what Governor Cooper and I need to be doing to make that happen. We're, we're happy to be here and look forward to getting back again soon. Colonel Rizzo, like to say a word? Mr. Governor, thank you. Mr. Secretary, appreciate that very much, Mr. Governor. We want to extend our, our thanks uh, to both the Governor and the Secretary for taking their time during Military Appreciation Month to come down and see us, and also the advocacy that the administration continues to have for all its service members in North Carolina to make a difference in the quality of life of our families. Uh, and to the Secretary's point, Marines enjoy being in North Carolina and we want to stick around. So thank you so much, Mr. Governor. Yes, sir. One other thing I forgot to mention, it's uh, an important day here during Military Appreciation Month. I was a strong supporter of the PAC Act that was passed in Congress, and today they've reached uh, a million claims across the country having been approved. 45,000 of those are here in North Carolina, veterans who deserve to be compensated for the courage they've had in defending our country, so we're glad to hear about that. Be glad to take questions from you guys. You talked about your tour, you talked about Florence. Is there anything you saw on the tour that felt especially impactful? Yeah, I, I think what is really fascinating here and a good thing is that they've been able to update everything with new technology, uh, with new training techniques that they would not have been able to do under the old building. So they've taken the opportunity here to take devastation from a storm and make everything better. And there's no question that the training that will occur here now will make for better trained Marines in, in the future. And that's really impressive the way they've taken this, this uh, 
devastation and, and turned it into a real opportunity. I've got two, I don't know whoever wants to answer them, um, but your initial reaction from seeing Florence now and then seeing the investments here um, and the Marines that you were talking to, what did they want? What, did they, what were they saying that they were needing? Well, I think that one of the things that active duty Marines are concerned about is, number one, their family, their spouse, their, their children, uh, oftentimes they get moved around and so we know that sometimes their stay here is temporary so oftentimes we need as a state to understand that they are in a different situation one example is having a spouse who uh, has a job in, in that requires a license or a certification we've been working very hard to make sure that that certifications or license can transfer from the other to the other state. Child care is a big issue right now. It is throughout the entire country and in North Carolina we are working to get the General Assembly to invest more in child care. But we know that that is a significant issue. And we heard positive things today about our public schools and about how the schools have welcomed the children of active duty military into, into these schools and that parents were pretty well satisfied and that they wanted to see the public schools supported and wanted to see the teachers paid more. And obviously that's something that we've been working on. So uh, I think it's pretty clear that uh, active duty military have a lot of the same concerns that everyday North Carolinians have, but it's, it's often more concentrated. And being the most military and veteran friendly state in the country, we wanna be responsive to that. I mean, we heard different kinds of stories of different issues that people had, and we're going to take those back and try to work on them for them. Go ahead. Next one. Um, after Hurricane Florence in 2018, what are some new improvements or strategies that uh, Camp Lejeune and even the surrounding communities have for uh, upcoming tropical storms or hurricanes? One of the things they've had an opportunity to do, and I'm going to turn it over to Colonel Rizzo, he can probably give you more specific. But they've become more resilient. Uh, I think it's important that when we build back that we are smarter because we understand that with climate change the, the storms are going to get worse, uh, the, the rain is going to come, the wind's going to come. We need to build back to make sure that we can withstand that and I think that uh, resilience has been top of mind for reconstruction on this base. It certainly has been top of mind for us if we as we have worked to recover for the entire state of North Carolina. I think, too, what, what they've been able to do with training and, and being able to train in more, with more modern technology has been pretty significant. And Colonel, I'll let you, might want let you say a word or two about that. I learned an awful lot today that I didn't know, that's for sure. Mr. Governor, thank you. As the Governor said, it is about resiliency, uh, but also we're taking the opportunity born of crisis with the additional funding uh, to rebuild after the hurricane, to purpose build our structures now so that units better fit into the facility and get the training value out of it they need. And, and then again, to the governor's point, it is resiliency. This installation needs to be able to take and sustain a blow, but be able to still project combat power in an efficient manner uh, by getting back up and, and on our feet as quickly as possible. And, and the governor and his team have absolutely advocated for that. So thank you again. Thanks, Anything? That was great. All right, one more and then we'll wrap. Um, I was wondering, how does helping the infrastructure and making it so much better, how does that help with recruitment for the Marines? Well, I'll let uh, the Colonel uh, sure. say that, deal with that as well, but I I'll say this. It appears to me, and we heard it around the table, that when you're looking anywhere in the world, a lot of Marines want to be in North Carolina and they want to end up in North Carolina when they get through with military service. And that says something about uh, who we are as a state while they are in the service and after, after the service. But I'll let the Colonel address that, because I'm going to let you brag on us if you want to. <laughs> you certainly have bragged on us today. Yes, sir, Mr. Governor. Uh, again, I believe the, the point here being that we in the Marine Corps judge how, how happy Marines are with what they're doing by our retention rate. We recruit the Marine, we retain the Marine's family. And that comes down to quality of life. 
If a Marine or a sailor or a civilian employees know that their family is being looked after and taken care of, we'll go anywhere in the world when the nation needs us. And again, that is part of this administration's, uh, what they have given to, to all the military members of North Carolina, no matter the service. So.